we have to work out the force of W using the trigonometry method. And so what I would always do is I would first take this diagram and simplify it. So I know that the center of the diagram is there, so I'd put a little dot over here. And then I'd look at all the forces. So there's this force going in that direction, which is T1. Or though, let me rather fill in the value because we have the value as 96. Then I would call this one T2. They would usually give that to you in the exam. They'll tell you what it's called. So that'll be T2. And then we've got W going downwards. So now we don't need this diagram, okay? But I'm gonna leave it. I know some of you probably like to look at the diagram. So now we need to fill in the angles. So we can do alternating angles over here and we'd realize that this is 60 degrees. So that means this angle inside here is 60 degrees over there. Then we can use alternating angles for this one and would get 30 degrees like that. Now it's a case of doing trigonometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little quick little diagram for ourselves, almost like a head to tail, but without a ruler or a protractor, just a quick little diagram. So I'm going to start with this one over here, the 96. I know that it goes off at 90 degrees, I mean at 60 degrees. So I'm going to do something like that, 96 with, an, with a 60 degree angle. Then I'm going to do a head to tail onto that. So the T2 is going to go off at 30 degrees. So that's going to be something like that. But I don't know how much T2 is or how far it is. But I know that this angle is 30 degrees. Then I know that W acts down. And I know that because this object is not moving, this diagram here on the right should form a triangle. So if I go down from here, that's not going to work because that's not going to make a triangle. So it's probably going to have to go downwards from over here. And then if you go down, 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 there we go. And so there we have our triangle where this will be W and this over here, we'll call this one T2. Now the angles are quite easy. Check this out. We know that this is 60. So if we do alternating angles, then this little angle over here is 60. What that means is that this whole angle is 90. So I'm going to put it at 90 over there. And then I can see here that that's a 90 degree, so that that means this little angle would be 30. Then if I just use the angles in a triangle, I would be able to work out this as 60. Now we use trigonometry. Now this is where you need to look at your triangle. If your triangle has a 90 degree, then you can use Sokotoa, you know, like in grade 10. If your triangle does not have a 90 degree, then you need to use the new formula that we've learned in grade 11, which goes like that. You could technically use this for any of them, even if it does have a 90 degree, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to use this one here because it does have a 90 degree. So I would like to be able to find W and I know that this is 96. Now you can use the 60 degree or the 30 degree. I'm gonna use the 30 degree just because I feel like it. It doesn't matter if you wanna maybe choose the 60, you will get the same answer. And so from that 30 degrees, we have the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 and we have the adjacent. So that's cos. Because it's adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're gonna say cos 30 equals to the adjacent, which is 96 over the hypotenuse, which is W. We're then going to get W alone. Now this one's a little more tricky because W is at the bottom. So what you do is you multiply W across like we normally do. Then what you need to do is divide by cos 30. So you're going to end up with W equals to 96 over cos 30. And that's going to give us a value of 110.85 newtons.